Welcome, welcome very much to this segment of Conversations where uh, uh, we have two young ladies that are very accomplished and so forth and they're both um, architecturally inclined and educated and they're also involved with an institution of uh, an, an, a unique institution, uh, just two or three years old, uh, that's based in Moscow. They're in from Moscow visiting with an, org with an organization that, that organized that trip here to New York. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they have names that are a little difficult for me being an Anglo-Saxon <laughs> to pronounce because they're Russian. And uh, I know we have Natasha. Maybe you could pronounce your name. Yeah. Your last. Natasha Orekhova. 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 <laughs> right. And then there's Ilya. Is that how you say it? Lia. Lia. Lia Safina. Lia but you're, Safinia. You're totally free to improvise on, Lia on my Safinia. name. Lia I like Lia Safinia. It could be like a movie star. Sure. You're Lia Safinia. <laughs> it sounds like that. But they're both associated with that. And welcome very, very much to Manhattan Network Thank you. And, uh, and Manhattan and Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Maybe you could kick it off, Nati, 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 Natasha, if you could. Uh, this institution that you're associated with, maybe you could uh, introduce it to the audience because it's an important, um, it's an important institutional learning experience that you're involved in. And then do that. But before you do that, maybe. You are, you are both graduate architects and so forth. You're both architects. So maybe you could kick it off personally. You, are, you have a training in mm -hmm. architecture and a little bit of your own background. Then we'll let her do it and then we'll get into discussing uh, you know, the issue of the institute that mm -hmm. you're representing here in New York now. Mm -hmm. So I graduated from uh, Moscow Architectural Institute uh, last year. Last year? Uh, huh? Last year I have a master degree, a uh, master of architecture. And uh, after my graduation, I decided that uh, I want to do something else, not to go to, uh, directly to the work, but to find something new and to discover some, something new. And there was a Strelka Institute, uh, Strelka, Strelka, uh -huh. Strelka Institute uh, for Media Design and Architecture, okay. uh, which was uh, established in 2000. Uh, Nine? It's I, a I think it's three it's years three, old. It's three years old. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's right. Uh, uh -huh. 2010, they opened yeah. their summer program, but they started uh, designing this uh, idea uh, in 2009. So, uh, in what? I'm in sorry? 2009. So, they started oh, yeah. thinking about this institution. So, there was uh, five uh, people uh, who wanted to create this new institution, which can, which is a uh, uh, Focus it on uh, urban studies, and the, yeah. the main mission is to change the agenda or change the social and cultural landscape of the city of Moscow, uh -huh. and uh, and then uh, as a further step to um, change uh, Russian uh, landscape. Uh, beyond that, then yeah. also, and you also do, you're also uh, architecturally trained, and well, I would not really say that I'm an architect because um, I graduated from a uh, Belarusian State University. Be Belarusia? Yes, in okay. Belarus. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I studied was interior design, but further mm. I worked uh, in an architectural bureau in design center. Uh -huh. So I'm still associated with architecture, mm. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the story of how I got acquainted with Strelka was through Facebook because I had a friend. Through who, Facebook? Yeah, through idea. Facebook. Yeah, mm. social networks we cannot go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, them right. Now. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I'm so behind the curve on that, but go ahead. Yeah. I had a friend who was a journalist, who is a journalist in Moscow, and she had one of the Strelka um, creators as a friend. And mm -hmm. though just by liking a post on creating some kind of a very interesting new institution. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. It's like yeah. Cooper Union kind of. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. No, Go ahead. No, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got really interested. So I was, I had thoughts on applying the first year and the second year, but the situation got uh, appropriate in the third year. So I did apply and I got in. And okay, I'm fine. Very I wonder if we could it. talk a little bit about education, sure. if you don't mind, because you say you graduated architect at uh, the master's degree. Mm -hmm. And here we have, you know, we have universities, we have state universities, we have junior colleges. I guess you're familiar with the system of education mm -hmm. here. Does it vary in Europe? Like your institute of architecture, would that be part of a graduate school connected to a university? 
or how is the educational system, mm -hmm. higher educational system laid out in Europe? Is there a standard model? Does it vary country to country? Maybe talking first about mm -hmm. Russia and yeah. then others, you know? Yeah, I'm not sure about Europe, but uh, in uh, Russia we have, uh, like if you wanted to be an architect, yes. you have to uh, go to the architectural school. You cannot have a bachelor, bachelor degree for us, uh, this bachelor uh, science yeah. or bachelor of art, art. Uh, so you have to go to the architectural school. Let me ask you, you did, did you, before you say you have a master's yeah. degree from an institute, did you do undergraduate before you went into the program of studying architecture? Yeah, and what did you do that in? Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a BA degree like we do here? Yeah, or, I uh? had a BA, BA degree, yeah. but uh, in our system, it's a new thing, this uh, new thing. bachelor and master program. Before, we have specialists. Yeah. Uh, and we had uh, six years of studying in our institution, yeah. uh, in the Moscow Architectural Institute. So it's uh, six years for specialists. Uh -huh. And now they change it. And uh, like two years ago, they started this new uh, program that you have five years of bachelor and two more years for master. I see. OK. So uh, you, you also can take another pass if you go to the college after uh, uh, like in a, like as a high school, yeah. Oh. You can go to the architectural college, and after graduation from this college, you can go to the institution. But you will be in the third course in the third year. Oh, I directly. see. Uh huh. So I guess it's similar. You're learning something, you become special and become architecture. And architecture is that. It's like I think of architecture as like the queen of the art, certainly of the built world. Architecture is amazingly important in terms of that. So it's sort of like part of the art world more than science but there's a lot of science involved also because you have to do new materials and careful tolerances and so forth it's a it's a really interesting field mm -hmm. architecture so you're very creative yeah and uh, our professor from our school uh, ten, uh, ten, uh, tell us that if you go to the architectural school you can do whatever you want after it after graduation so you can become artist designer I don't know. Yeah, you know, it, it's very comprehensive. Journalist or writer or even a director. So well, that's uh, that's interesting. Really, they told you that. Yeah. yeah that you could do that. It's a, it's got a kind of because large. There is a systematic uh, way of thinking. Architects have this systematic way of thinking, and yeah. also yeah, uh, uh, they understand space very well, so yeah. they can uh, design. Yeah, they design can design. Is is and good. and architect, the world architect is a. Uh, from uh, Latin words, I don't really remember the name, but this is uh, for creating values. Uh, okay. So architects is the one who create values. Oh, uh, you mean the entomology of the word, the creation of the yeah. word comes in. I didn't know, I didn't know what it was, but I've got a great respect for the discipline of architecture and everything. And you're involved with it, but you didn't get your degree in that. You're in Belarus. Is it yeah. about the same, the educational system? Can you relate to um, the system in Russia? Uh, we and can relate, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. um, but the Russia has converted to the Bologna process several mm -hmm. years ago. We Bologna. Uh, um, this Bologna. is the Bologna, this is the specific like the university Yeah, they have Italy? this Bologna system. That's the oldest university in the world, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, sure. But there is um, in Europe there is the um, common system of evaluating and okay. common system of having a bachelor and then a master. There is. That's so it. Russia has just recently converted to that. Oh, I and, see. Okay. And Belarus has not yet converted to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we just uh, have masters programs. Yeah. It's just that the structure is not yet built in a way to satisfy those the standards yeah. that are all over the Europe. Yeah. Um, you said the Lyceum and you had the gymnasium and there were different things coming out of, yeah, different, yeah. But very good education. And it was the state university you were yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. And it you took a degree in what? Uh, interior design. Interior design. But okay. more, more like spatial design. Yeah. We did many things. Feng Shui. <laughs> and is that part of it, you know, or the placement of things? I think it's urban design of course. Uh, yeah, this could be also called or called urban design. Again, design. Yeah. Yeah, but it's very, very closely, uh, very closely related to what architects study. Mm -hmm. So I had no, pro not no problem continuing my work 
that okay. as an architect afterwards. How about the language? Russian? You do yeah, Russian? Yeah, you have it's Russian. Belio Russian. Yeah. We do have Belarusian language as, well. as a state languages. We yeah. have both Russian yeah. and Belarusian. Yeah. But the majority of uh, population speaks Russian. Yeah, Russian. Yeah. Well, this comes with being a part, a now, former part of Soviet Union. You're young. You're you're in your early your early stages of life. Is, you know, coming out of university and everything. But you speak English very well. Does all of educated people in Russia speak English now? Is are they picking it up, or or in Europe for that matter? What what's the status of language in terms of commonality of means of communication? How mm -hmm. do you speak Russian English so well? I mean, yeah, I think it's not really, it's not common in, in Russia. It's uh, not common. No, it's uh, usually uh, foreigners who come uh, to Moscow, they uh, struggle <laughs> with it. They couldn't uh, describe, uh, like ask uh, people in, on the street what they wanted. Like they, people don't understand what they uh, asking and it's, it's really difficult. And in Moscow, it's the uh, situation is quite okay. But if they go to uh, regions, it's really hard to find the anyone who can say something say something in English you mean yeah yeah I see uh, even even though they have universities university trained people are they becoming do you, I guess what I'm getting at is we, what do we got about 5,000 languages I think you know we're a lot of them are dying out but um, they they have uh, English is becoming a language of science I think a lot of the, the thing I wonder if we're going to end up with one language do you think you think the whole world will end up speaking English? Is it a trend that way? I'm not sure about it. Yeah, yeah. me neither. Yeah, I'm not either. Because That's because why I was asking the question. <laughs> because you know? some people, Where uh, we go? they wanted to keep uh, their language right. Sure, sure. And I, I read an article. Mm -hmm. a, um, a Russian scientists, they discussing this issue about uh, English as a common language for uh, uh, like they uh, write writing papers. Yeah. And they couldn't really um, put the, the whole, uh, their ideas in, in English as well as uh, in Russian. So in yeah. Russia you can, maybe because we, sometimes we have words that you don't have in English. So you need to uh, understand the terms very well, uh, the word, the definition of the word yeah, and the yeah, essence yeah, of the, yeah. world, mm -hmm. the word. And it can be a problem with something. And, and a lot of scientists, they, uh, especially in the, humani uh, in the humanis humanity, humanity, they, yeah. um, they play with words, and this is how they build their theories, for example. So it's yeah, can I tell you something interesting, design and everything? I have a friend of mine who's very brilliant, young, Korean, and he's developing a system based upon the incredible nuance of the color spectrum. If you get into great, you have a sense of design. Mm -hmm. The color spectrum is so nuanced by, if you go through all the shades of yellow mm -hmm. and all the shades, and, and the mixes in there, using that as a template for trying to put together a program where you would be able to imp uh, use that as a template for translating autonomically mm -hmm the languages of the world into one another so that you would speak English and it would be heard automatically in Russian or in German or in Japanese mm -hmm. and back and forth to br bridge the language barrier. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be something if we could do that? We're losing a lot of the Indian languages. They're low, you know, the, the languages. Mm -hmm. the kind of, there's just a sidebar that had to do with design. Mm -hmm. and that the implications of the new technologies that are moving. Uh, architecture is very interested in design, right? And your work too is design. And this uh, institute that's in Moscow, Stroka? Stroka. It means arrow, I yeah. understand, in Russian. And it's an institute for education and media. No, for no? media design oh, yeah, yeah, you tell us about what it is, okay? It's an uh, institute for media design uh, and architecture. Mm -hmm. It's a non-formal organization. Non-formal. Yeah, okay. it's a postgraduate uh, program for uh, yeah, okay. for nine months. Uh huh. And each year we have new students coming from uh, Russia and from uh, other countries. For example, we have people from Singapore, from India, from states, okay. from Europe, uh, and they have quotes for uh, for foreigners. It's twelve uh, people, and uh, and the whole group is uh, nearly forty people. Okay, this is a group, it's like a class within college or something, but it's only 40 people. 
Yeah, we have. And it's an it's educational and learning and okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, so we're yeah. starting with these 40 people and the first three months is dedicated to the uh, group works and uh, team building exercises, workshops. Uh, we had, um, they asked us to, uh, for example, there was a project. Um, on Which one are you, are you trying to remember? No, oh, any any anyone? Can you uh, the mapping Red October? Yeah, there was the first. Uh, for example, we had the first uh, workshop called Mapping Red October. Uh, mapping. Re mapping. Mapping, like yeah. making a map. Like yeah. A, yeah, mapping. Yeah. Mapping Red October, and Red October is the island where uh, uh, Stroka is situated. Is oh, located. it's it's right on the Moscow River, or Mo yeah, yeah. This is one. Uh, this is small uh, I yeah. sort of island. Yeah. Uh, and it's shaped like an arrow. Isn't it? It's, 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 yeah, we just in Russia, we call this Strelka, this kind of island. Okay, right. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Uh, That's the name of the institute. Then. Yeah. And uh, our task was to go uh, through all this uh, island, uh, just to walk around and see the patterns. Oh, uh, we actually divided in uh, f six groups, uh -huh. and each group get a topic. Uh, for example, there was a food topic uh, or a... Uh, Religion. International religion, mm -hmm. uh, sex, uh, animals, animals. Yeah. So uh, each of us has this uh, topic, and we need to understand how we can map this uh, island in the f for this topic. For example, uh, my group was uh, for sex, and we trying to understand how the gender, uh, both female and male, were represented yeah. in uh, in the island. We're just looking through the images of men and women. And we picture picture them how how they wanted to how they present see how they how, yeah how they yeah, how they dress and present. how they present themselves to the society. You took pictures. Uh, yes, yeah, not not no. people who is uh, who were in the island, but yeah. the uh, images of uh, oh the images of the yeah, advertising yeah. Buildings, like or buildings. Okay, and right. advertisement. So we uh, capture all of the uh, pic uh, images that we could find yeah. and map them on the map. Like put them on a map where where you see the this particular image. I'm a and geographer, and I we're we're <laughs> partial to maps. You know, <laughs> yeah, they can maps are really interesting. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and so then uh, you can understand what's the like how these uh, people in the island see the women and men. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that would be interesting. And, and, then and they even created a very interesting scale uh, of uh, all the images that they took from male and the female. Um, images from how um, how dressed they are or how undressed they are. The uh -huh. scale from like zero to infinity. Yeah, yeah, that could be done on a world scale. It would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah it yeah, appeared yeah. that uh, women were represented more naked uh, uh -huh. and men were dressed uh, uh, with the suits and they were men like are business so conservative. Business <laughs> They're so conservative, like penguins walking around. But I mean, how would you like thing. men to be represented? Sorry. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, well, I <laughs> don't know. But, you know, it's very conservative and everything like that. Yeah, but there were other aspects to the thing. You had oh, a thing there. I, you showed me a PowerPoint thing mm -hmm. you had. And the, the urban, the, some people had sleeping place only, and then other people had houses that were spread out. And that's a... That's like mapping the environment and so forth. And you're taking the measure of things and you've got media connected somehow with that stroke. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you could spell that out. Uh, uh, is yes, it is it all architect-oriented people? Or no, it's an no? interdisciplinary Interdis team. Uh -huh, okay. uh, people from, uh, it's mostly architects. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, first year it was 80% of architects and now it's reduced to 40 why was it oh, so many architects that were, were the board of, there's a board of directors or people who do financing that kind mm -hmm. of thing and everything was there a lot of interest in the people that were in the architectural realm in Russia that got behind the institution that got started or I think how they, come so many architects I think they thought that uh, architects can be um, the media media person media like medium uh, yeah, me the one who connect uh, people and who uh, yeah who has the, I don't know. No, I understand what you mean. That would, and, and then we have the term media. That's all. Like we're in media here. We're in television media. So that's another use of the word media. Mm -hmm. It's communication. And, and so the forth. architects yeah. are good uh, in uh, s 
problem solving tasks. Yes, yeah. So uh, I think it was a it was the uh, idea to uh, bring architects to uh, and make them agents of change, the one who would uh, change the city mm -hmm. and change the environment, change okay. landscape and change the quality of life in okay, the city. Okay, now let me change the question for you. Why was it 80% was uh, architects, now only 40%? Will it get to be only 5%? Why the change from being so dominant to less? And what mm -hmm. kind of people are being brought on that were not uh, mm -hmm. from uh, some other discipline other than architects, do you think? That mm -hmm. seems to be a trend over your three-year history. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in my opinion, I mm. can only <laughs> speak Yeah, you're from, an architect, you know, so you've got a vested interest. Yeah, right? I think yeah. they wanted to, to uh, create multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary Multidisciplinary, team. yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, that architects Good. can learn from different people. Yes. And they can uh, learn how to communicate uh, more well, because if they are only uh, uh, rounded by architects, so they couldn't really uh, have this find a way how to uh, communicate their ideas. And yeah, when you right. are rounded by different people with different point of view and uh -huh. with different um, mission, they you really need to uh, to be clear of what you want yeah. and how you can how you um, how to find this common ground uh, with the with all these people? Yeah, there 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 would be a respect for what is called uh, systems thinking or comprehensive thinking, a multidisciplinary, cross-disciplinary understanding of things, which I mm -hmm. laud in the fact that seems to be what's behind this mission mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we now have uh, geographers, economists, uh, PR people, social uh, sci uh, studies. Mm. Uh, Musicians, musicians and artists. So it's Musician. also you yeah. let musicians and poets in. Sorry, you let musicians in. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have musicians. Uh, okay. Experimental. No, I'm musician. making a joke. Really, no <laughs> music is. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's ex experimental musician. He's uh, working with this uh, ambient uh, music. Do you know? Ambient. No, I don't know. Ambient music. So you music? collect. Uh, music from uh, different uh, oh, objects. background music. Uh, like you can try to to record everything that you do. Yeah. Like uh, uh, oh, I don't know. Just take a tube and uh, steel tube and make noise oh. and record it. Yeah. And then when you have these clips uh, of uh, this sound, yeah. then you can combine it all together and create a piece of uh, music. You know, I threw out the thing, I don't know if I'm right, or maybe you could throw in me, you, you, you all visited, if I'm not mistaken, we we're in touch with you here, we got friends of ours back in Moscow, they're friends of yours, your sister's a good friend of a good friend of ours, and that's how we got in touch, but you went and visited the Cooper Union yesterday, and the Cooper Union is a very much of an institution that has great implications in terms of education and a broader society, and a man it sounds to me like, what you're doing there, newly, with this institute, is along the line of a, it's not a university, it's not a standard university, but it's educational and in, in, in the same sense that, uh, you know, institutions do have a great role for in educating, but it's sort of informal or something, mm -hmm. in, in a way. Is that, does that seem more or less right with Stroka? Or? Um, I would say Stroka is still finding itself, mm -hmm. itself because it's... Try to talk this way to the camera. Hi. <laughs> there you go. You're so pretty. Let it shine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess Stroke is still finding uh, itself. It's constantly changing. It's yeah. only on its third year. Uh huh, yeah. Uh, what is interesting is, as it has already been mentioned, that it's a nine month program. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. So when we come there, 40 or less people, what we first have is we have three months of introduction. Right. Introduction to Strelka, to Moscow, to its way of educating, uh, to the context and everything. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, after those three three months, what we what is happening is that all 40 of us are divided into research studios. Okay. Uh -huh. Last year there were five, I think, and the first year there were five. Studios. Yes. Yeah. But this year there are four. And um, it is very interesting, as Natasha has already noted, that Stralka is a bit deriving from uh, the topic of architecture. Uh -huh. And this year, architecture and, uh, and urbanism is yeah. represented only in one of studios out of four. Architecture and urbanism are together in one? On, uh, I mean, I can the see topic that. is yeah. touched yeah. only in one topic of the studio. Uh -huh. The three, the 
The three that, uh, that are left, they they have something to do with cities, of course, because Strelka is all about cities. Cities, okay, yeah. it's urban, it's a heavy urban yeah. function. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, but okay, let me just that's maybe also in keeping with the zeitgeist. I sure. mean, that's the way yeah. things are emerging. Yeah, go ahead. But maybe just to clarify that, yeah. uh, I should talk about each studio a little bit. Please. So the studio that we represent is Education as a Project, and its name is already interesting because um, you could understand it in many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, what is education as a project? Is it just yeah. like um, so as an alternative to institutions, some yeah. projects, educational projects that are grassroots based, mm -hmm. or um, our product of as students, as researchers in Stroka is a project. So you could understand that in different ways. Yeah, so absolutely. What we do, huge. Yeah. yeah. So what we do is we research the past, the present and the future of education. And we're trying to find some patterns and generate new ideas and see how digital education, which is a big trend currently, absolutely. influences, Boy, you, influences yeah. the, the state of education worldwide. Wow, that's a huge, huge tablet you're <laughs> working on there. It really is. Education in itself, the way it is. And then that, are the people who come there all people that are at advanced stage or having passed, uh, gotten degrees or advanced degrees out of the universities or are there any people who just don't have any degree? Is it open to anybody? How are the 40 people selected? Do they apply? Is there a competition for it? Because it's a, it seems like a very progressive and important thing that a lot of people would like to be associated with. But how did the 40 people be selected? and? How does it get to be where it's going to other parts of the world and what are the patterns of growth and what direction? You know, <laughs> if you can a understand a bunch of interrelated questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so there are minimum requirements for entering Strelka. You should have a degree. and you should That would be like a bachelor's degree? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. master's. And that's thought of here, and that's usually that's about a four-year proposition for most people. Four or five. 22 yes. to 24 years old or 25. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay. It's actually changed, uh, uh, changes, uh, th like the, uh, when we were applying, it was from 23 or 22 years old, I think, and now they 21. change, uh, even 21, yeah, and now they change it for starting from 25 years old, so they want uh, in more, a new... More academic background. In you want some academic achievement before you come there. Not yeah. only yeah. academic, yeah. they also require you to have some... Uh, experience in working, okay. in doing projects, in you know, in applying yeah. your knowledge because it, just knowledge is not enough. So you, they they you want have a to good be proactive to get. So them. the board of directors, the people responsible, are like some people who are pretty well honed is the mm -hmm. term. I don't know if you know that term. Who are, are pretty have had some experience and some education, mm -hmm. and they're they're not just. Um, it's for next year. Uh, yeah. it's for next year. They uh, they change it for. They, they uh, add this uh, experience that yeah. they, uh, people sh should have three years uh, mm -hmm. of working experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for our uh, group it wasn't uh, required, but we had to uh, submit recommendation letter from uh, school or from uh, previous work. Yeah. And then a portfolio. A portfolio uh, of your work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, uh, so it's motivation. Like trying to get into Harvard or something. Motivation letter. <laughs> kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Motivation letter. Yeah. And uh, English. Hmm? Test, yeah. yeah. English. Oh, yeah, they want, is uh, the teaching is in English? Yeah, yeah, everything, everything is in oh, English. Oh, that's interesting. We started talking about the English language and so mm -hmm. forth. That's very interesting. Yeah. It, yeah, it sounds to me like that kind of thing, it's an informal thing. We do some education here within this education, you know, this television, because we've got a lot of people who are interested in things and you're communicating out. So there's a lot of institutions of learning and autodidact where people <coughs> can teach themselves. And the internet is a sister institution to television and public access. So there's a lot of ways that information is becoming available to people that historically it's only been related to a few people in the palace or something, mm -hmm. you know, over in feudal times and all that. So uh, they're all sort of, there are other kinds of institutions, others than the established insti uh, universities mm -hmm. that are having an important role in terms of educating the public and helping affect policy, no? And Stroka would be one, and there are probably other examples around the world. You see that emerging, those kind of institutes emerging in the time ahead, outside of Moscow or outside, you know what I'm saying, on the yeah. world scale maybe? Or? Uh, 
What do yeah, you think? Yeah, I think uh, while we were in uh, New York and uh, Boston, we met a lot of people from different institutions, and yeah. they, some of them say that what Strelka does, it's similar to what they do. For example, we've been uh, today to Architectural League of New York, Okay. and uh -huh. they said that they have uh, similar uh, ideas, but they don't have a school. Uh -huh. uh, but they have uh, also consultancy, they uh, create competition. Yeah, it's important things to, si to add about Strelka, that it's not only school, mm -hmm. and it's a big institution which has a, a Strelka Press, it's publishing program, then Strelka Consultancy, uh, the oh, organiza uh -huh. organization that work with the Russian government and help them uh, create a program for competition, like for example, Big Moscow competition, uh, etc. And big, um, big, Mos big Moscow competition. Big Moscow. Yeah, it's like Grand uh, Grand, oh. Grand Paris. The, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Huh? Or Great London. Big, so yeah. yeah this yeah. Big Moscow. And um, what else? So they they have practical feedback to the society. Yeah, so and we also have Strelka Summer Program, uh -huh. which started in, in May and mm -hmm. end, uh, uh, end of September. Yeah. And we have a uh, lot of workshops, uh, TV screenings, uh, lectures, uh, roundtables, conferences. And even interviews from the interview yeah, magazine. Interviews, and they, it's every day we have a lot of events happening in the courtyard of Strelka mm -hmm. and a lot of people come and Strelka has a very uh, wide network they invite people from all around the world and oh. we have uh, outside of the 40 the 40 people that are the students no, we are there. students but they uh, no everybody can participate in the summer program so it's open to from the, the public. From, from, from Moscow, or for you're in the Moscow, r right down the street from the Kremlin. It's, yeah, it's, right, it's open yeah. program, so yeah. you can uh -huh. participate in uh, every workshop, lectures, you can go to, I, and it's free. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? That's really good. It's supported by, you have a board of directors, you had a picture of the board of directors, one was good oligarch. <laughs> <laughs> you had, it's a good, you had an architect in that, and good, and because you've had this thing developed since 1989 in uh, Russia, where you've got a lot of people who are very, very successful entrepreneurs and so forth, so there's a great deal of money, and you got support for this thing from people who are citizens that are concerned in a wider public educational and advancement uh, uh, philanthropy, philanthropic, Philanthropic, philanthropic uh, mm -hmm. you know, focus, I guess. So you have pretty good backing in terms of the board of directors and so forth who put this mm -hmm. all together. Was it any one person that was like Montessori, who's <laughs> schools are uh, uh, encouraged by, you know, the example of Montessori, but is there any one person who was the spark plug that got the idea started, or are you aware, or how did it get started? It's, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we go ahead, talk up. Sure. <laughs> um, there is this guy, he's yeah. called Ilya Skolkov Tsinsiper. Yeah. He, um, in the 90s, he has launched a biggest, one of the biggest magazines in Russia. Oh, really? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's called Afisha Magazine. Mm -hmm. And it was um, all about what's happening in Moscow currently. Okay. So, yeah. uh, Strelka was his visionary project. His? Yeah. Would like but I would say all five of them. Uh, the, the board is five. Yeah. yeah okay. Maybe yeah. that we have a, a sixth one. Which yeah, they added. Yeah, yeah, they uh, join. Somebody and else joined the board. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Um, you have inter you have uh, industrialists and people of uh, from entrepreneur. the industry. Yeah. Uh, financiers, bankers. Uh, I think they're more of uh, there's an architect and uh, then there is an owner. Yeah, they, I would artist. say. Yeah, there's an artist, and then there is an owner of uh, supermarket chains. Well, who's this guy that's the good oligarch? There, yeah. yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> they had a picture, and there's a guy at the end of the thing that is a good oligarch, <laughs> as opposed to a bad, you know, the, 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 you understand? Yeah, the oligarch, it, it seems to be a joke, or somebody understands, we got these private sector people who are very, very successful, right? Yeah, yeah. And He's respected, uh, and everything. There's been a big change from the old days of... Uh, Khrushchev or, or Stalin, you know, communism, there was a big change and other class of people emerged as very important into the overall development of the country and the city, right? Yeah, they appear after Perestroika. Yeah, right, after Perestroika, yeah. Maybe you should mention the new 
Mayor? Newmer? Yeah, New Mayor, sure, go ahead. Yeah, it's interesting for us to understand Moscow. It's a major center. Uh, yeah. yeah, we have a new mayor of Moscow, Sergei Sabanin. Uh huh. But what do you want to say? I mean, um, he has launched a lot of changes in the city. Uh, when Lushkov was the mayor, yeah. um, it was very conservative. Okay. And a lot of, a lot of things have been happening, um, not because they should have happened, but because he wanted them to happen. So, uh, with the new mayor, city at last has yeah. a lot of new opportunities to finally grow and finally catch up of what uh, other great cities in the world have already achieved. I, so, yeah, uh -huh. since he, he started his work, uh, there has been a huge new transformation of the parks. Okay, uh, of the and parks. Okay. Yeah, of the parks in the city. Uh, what else? There, I think he has a lot of programs launched and it's um, pretty early to discuss the results, but mm. things are going and Moscow is growing and, and blooming. But he was, I think, the, the starter of, of, of the whole idea of enlarging Moscow. Mm, well, Double. Or, it's, or, it's, it's very, or big Moscow, it's very you difficult call. to say yeah. who, who had this uh, yeah. idea. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would like to return to Perestroika. Like after Perestroika, they, uh, I in the Soviet time, uh, all the, um, how, you, how you say this, uh, all the property were, was uh, government yeah, yeah. based, so it w there was no private uh, property. Nomenclatura. Huh? Normal control. Yeah, right. Okay. And, yeah, it was all it was all private, uh, public sector. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and after Perestroika, they start selling the land. Yeah. Uh, in Moscow, and there was a lot of developments uh, uh, going on in the city. So they sell a lot of uh, land there, mm. and the city transformed very uh, tremendously, and we had a lot of new buildings which were ugly and low quality and they don't have anything to do with the city life and and they destroy a lot of public spaces and mm. uh, I don't know so everything became more commercial yeah. and this um, like we had the uh, huge squares which yeah. were uh, changed to uh, uh, shopping malls uh, like uh, like the like America or like you're, yeah, other than what had been there before? Yeah, there was no... There were state stores or something. Yeah, there yeah. were state stores yeah. and they were kind of... They were kind beauti of beautiful <laughs> and uh, <laughs> lively. And now they, it's just monsters in the city. Yes. And uh, yeah, and I think New Mayor, he is trying to change it mm -hmm. somehow to bring life to the city, they work like, like, with the uh, like nightlife. The city. <laughs> I no, understand. No, no, I, I understand. Moscow is becoming a happening town. I mean, in terms of jazz and music and you know all that kind of thing. Am I right? I mean, New York. As you said, you like New York. I think they try. There's a to lot going on. A lot of art and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, they try to bring life into the uh, streets because before people were like just sitting in their uh, apartments <laughs> and homes and the no public spaces and and now people wanted to ah. take it back and uh, return and that's their when you uh, said they're improving the parks as a place for people to gather yeah, yeah, yeah. right that's great yeah, yeah so right. they uh, put more green in the city they uh, build this uh, bike, like bike path, yeah. For bike yeah bike right 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 yeah yeah okay well that, that, that's good and I was wondering when you said somebody was more conservative I'm trying to think what does that mean in Russia Conservative? Because if you conserve, usually conservative, you're conserving the old, you know, the old way. And uh, what does it mean to be a conservative in what was a capital, a communist country that went through shock therapy and had emerging capitalist institutions and so on? What does it mean to be a conservative in the Soviet, in, in Russia? You, do you, you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say this this means not keeping up to date to what's happening in the world. Oh. So I was referring to the old mayor. Yeah. So he was on his uh, he was ruling the the town the, the city for quite a long time. Right. Okay. So it's safe to say for this period of time mm -hmm. nothing has changed mm. uh, in terms of uh, getting closer to new things emerging in the west and the east. Everything has been developing on the same pace, in the same trajectory. Uh -huh. So I would say this is conservative. 
Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, innovations, I think they are very necessary for the city. Uh -huh. uh, and and you all is, study this at, at, at Stryker. Yeah, you all study this do. in an in integrative way. That's really good. So you got an interesting take on it. It's um, good, good it's training for citizenship, yeah. And it's yeah. very interesting how the rest of the three other studios, um, what topics do they take on in order to innovate in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're dealing with education, as I've already mentioned, but there is a studio that's, dating with, uh, that's dealing with big data. Yeah. So you know, the numbers, yeah, the statistics, yeah. Yeah, the, all yeah. the digital age. And they're trying to figure out uh, what can we do with it so it could enhance people's life, make them easier. You know, uh, if you just have all the data about traffic, yeah. you know that you wouldn't go this way, you mm -hmm. would go that way. Uh -huh. And this is the simplest example of how you could apply data. Yeah. So they're looking at it. But then there's also another studio yeah. who, are, who are looking at patterns of cohabitation. Okay, yeah, the you had the buildings you showed. Yeah, right, go ahead, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so Moscow is very famous for its micro rayons. Uh, its what? Micro rayons. This is a very micro Russian micro rayons. Micro, like micro. Oh, micro small. rayons. Rayons Ryan. are like areas. Oh, district, okay. Sorry, district. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. See, so I'm ignorant of the language. Sorry, <laughs> but it's great. Don't speak of the English. Education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So it's famous for its micro rayons. The small. Uh, towns inside of the city. So mm -hmm. when you have a number of um, a number of houses, the multi-level houses, yeah. uh, residential, and they're arranged in the same way, like horizontal, vertical, and then they have yeah. a hospital, and then they have the school, yeah. and you have and you take this model, yeah. and then you replicate it ten times around. Uh, I see. Yeah. So those are the microarians. There are quite a lot of them in uh -huh. Moscow. Is that a new thing? More or no, 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 no. It has been happening for quite a, yeah, quite a lot of time. From the 60s, okay. Yeah, from the 60s they started uh, expanding the Moscow because before it was the like the small center, which yeah. is now it's a uh, historical center. Mm -hmm. And then they started build, building the, uh, the sleeping districts, just microarions. And uh, Moscow expands like three times. Wow, okay. Or maybe rapidly. even two more. Two times, two uh, times. Yeah. No, I think even more because this is small, Turku, and it's kind of like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I saw the map you had. Uh, yeah, like that. It's yeah, growing. and now with this big Moscow, <laughs> they big wanted Moscow, to add yeah. this. Greater Moscow. We say greater New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gr yeah, greater yeah, big Moscow. Moscow. They wanted to add the same, uh, like uh, expand it twice more. So it's. I think would be bigger city, biggest city in the world. Yeah. And it's interesting when people biggest were city in the world, yeah, in in terms of population or just or, or of, uh, area size. <laughs> in size. Oh, I see the big city that way. Yeah, I see. Yeah, right. So it's like urban planning and and all kinds of things are involved in what you're involved with at the institute. It must be an interesting group of people and things going on. How does it relate? Saint Petersburg is a major city in Russia. And it's the center of a lot of arts, and it's gorgeous with the heritage and all that. Um, how do the two cities relate, or am I off base in trying to put a, a particular emphasis upon St. Petersburg and Moscow in terms of understanding Russia? I mean, population, concentration, power, uh, influence, in industrial development, and mm -hmm. so forth. Those two cities are two major cities, or am I off base, or yeah. what? Or what? What's the What's yeah, the they are two major city. Yeah, but and it's such a huge country. Oh uh, well. Yeah, we have some smaller city, but uh, it's two biggest. Uh, we have also Novosibirsk, which is in uh, si Siberia. Yeah, that's but a research center. Or large yeah, it's academic uh, yeah. city. Uh, then we have some other Vladivostok and much Lot more. Of way over on that. Yeah, so far it was eight and a half million square miles I think I was a ge I'm a geographer <laughs> I'm mean, now on television but I was a geographer you know, eight and a half million square miles when it was all contained now it's been broken up a bit and everything mm -hmm. but it's just huge 12 time zones yeah. it's hard to uh, to uh, encompass just how huge that 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 empire or that country was um, so that's really interesting, and um, and uh, it's uh, your your institute is very interesting. Uh, do you see this giving a launch pad for you this time? Nine months spent in this way, and you spent some you spent uh, some time in 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 Brussels uh, in, in Netherlands. Netherlands, right? Yeah. Was that part? That wasn't part of this institute. No, it wasn't. That was something else you did post uh, post 
graduate, uh, both. Uh, uh, no, I was still studying in my uni uh, architectural institute in Moscow. Yeah. But I was working on my thesis uh, project, so I had some free time out of institute, so I could go for a couple of months to. Uh, oh, a study. couple of months. Because I had a project on. Uh, ar uh, on uh, Dutch architecture, uh -huh. so studying their approach to was that uh, part of your thesis? Uh, yeah, it was really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. was uh, intentionally I chose this uh, country to, to get to th you were to get there. Yeah, yeah. Big difference between West Europe, uh, Netherlands, France, and Germany, and that in Russia, or is there a division yeah. there? We had the we had the Iron Curtain for all those years and everything. Is it a big cultural difference, or? Yeah, I think with Russia is is very big cultural difference uh, from from, uh, from Western, Western Europe. Yes, from really? Western Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of politics, because because of the history. Yeah, because of they the were all history. feudal countries for a while, a few hundred years back. They all had a certain kind of common background. I think Russia was settled by Scandinavian people. Originally, yeah. they were established by the Swedes, you know. Yeah. So, but they feel they're distinct. Then Petersburg was a window on the way. Okay, I'm sorry, we're getting into <laughs> history and seeing things comprehensively. Is this a launching pad for you to have a career that would be, this is a career, they have the term in uh, uh, the career move, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're, getting in, you're getting based and everything, and then you're going to, you want to end up in uh, doing architectural work. Do you, what do you want to do with your life? Do you have it well worked out? Because this would be a staging thing for you in terms of how you see you're going to develop the, you, what you want to do when you get into mm -hmm. a, you know further adulthood and everything. And maybe both of you could address mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I'm really interested in education and okay. uh, architectural education. Uh, okay. Because when I was studying my, yeah. in my institution, I was, it was said that people they are very conservative uh, in our institution and they don't really um, help students develop their skills but they just impose your institution of architecture yeah mm. architecture yeah institute. not stroke not yeah, okay, okay okay right okay so huh? they impose their vision on uh, every student so they it's 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 really um, limiting I don't know, but uh, a lot of, a lot of students a feel frustrated for the, the, with this uh, program and with institution, and a lot of them, they changed their uh, career to, the, they became uh, interior designers, uh -huh. or, oh, okay. or even changed it tremendously. I, 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 I don't know, but a lot of people, they were really upset with the architectural profession and... Uh, you mean the quality of the education, could I say? Uh, yeah. Or the philosophy so of the educational really institution. So they don't encourage people to uh, be entrepreneurial, maybe, be or take charge of project or something. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So, yeah. What I wanted to do, I think, I wanted to uh, be a teacher in the institute, of course. Uh, of architecture. Yeah, architectural uh, in architectural institute, but also I want to uh, be an architect and uh, maybe conduct some research about, uh, because I'm really interested in theory, architectural yeah, are theory. Are you really? Okay, that's interesting, yeah. yeah. And the history of it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Well, this is, so you're sort of ready to go down the yellow brick road of architecture in one way or another, learning, and how about yourself? Do you, I mean, well, um, I'm really interested in educational theory. <laughs> you both are, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you're at the right place to stroke, mm -hmm. it seems to me, yeah. I had background uh, in teaching while Are I was you? back in Belarus. Uh -huh. So um, it was at university. No, at youth center. So youth centers. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. My approach is more of a facilitation and based on non-formal education. Uh -huh. As I know, I think in America, non-formal education is a bit has a bit of a shifted uh, meaning than in Europe. Uh, but that was a youth center, so it was all about. Not given the specific knowledge that you you would get in the university, yeah. but uh, but more of a life based knowledge. So uh -huh. we would yes, we right. do simulations of practical, yeah, yeah, yeah very practical yeah, yeah. based. So we would do simulations of different um, of different things that people could could see in life or different jobs that they could get. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, the young people could. <coughs> Uh, could know uh, get to know how to do their project, how to manage a project, how to write mm. a proposal, you ah. know. So, 
more of a peer-to-peer that, -peer learning. That then. certainly applies for, in architects, you have to have somebody able to put it all together. And because it's not only the architect design and everything, it's also putting together a project, because you're dealing with very large projects and everything. You have to have business uh, acumen and being able to put together the project planning and all that. So that's part of, would be part of the education, I guess, and everything, yeah. Well, okay, you want to you want to keep your roots in Bailey or Rust? Do you ever think about going to other parts of the world or anything? Or you got other parts of the world coming to, to mm -hmm. your institute now. They're coming increasingly. It was all Russian at the beginning, and then now it's already getting down. You got people coming from around the world. The institute's emerging as an internationally recognized mm -hmm. major institution and a, a model for other uh, institutes that might appear around the world that helps take people in your kind of a position and give them a good focus and education in the best mm -hmm. sense of the word, practical and, and theoretical, no? Yeah. It, there might be more of these kind of institutes emerging around the world. Yeah, I think there are some similar institutions in the world. Yeah. They maybe have some, you know, n n not the same, but they are similar and they have similar goals. Mm -hmm. But it's super to peculiar activate. that this morning me and a other other fellow researcher we visited Gallatin School in oh, yeah, New right, York right. University. Oh yeah, right, for the deaf, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So what is interesting and it's very similar to Strelka approach is that uh, Gallatin School claims to have a very individualized approach. Uh -huh. So when a student comes there. He, they don't have departments. Yeah. Each student personalizes his own education. So okay. you you get a topic that you're very interested in, uh -huh. and then you choose courses uh -huh. that are suitable for that topic. Right. And this is both very similar to Strelka in a way, because we come, uh, though we're divided into studios, but we still choose a topic that is very interesting for us, and we do a project or a research or something else on that topic. Uh -huh. So, very personalized trajectory. Yeah, very personalized, and also, that give back that term of uh, auto uh, institutes that allow for people to be able to take charge of their own mm -hmm. situation. It's called, the term is autodidact, of teaching yourself. The best thing that can be imaginable is somebody who's like a hound dog running down a fox. They're really interested. They're not doing something out or directed. Somebody says you have to do step one, two, three in order to get a credential that you can get a job doing something. But they're really engaged in, in turn uh, from, you know, not outer directed, but inner directed in terms of their intellectual interest or their curiosity. Running that down, that's when the real education takes place. It seems to me Stroke is really one that could encourage that. I understand your sister, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't talked is a geographer. Yeah. Give her my best regards. There aren't very many of us left, you know, because it's such a comprehensive thing. Also, you're very comprehensive in terms of your take. You're, you're, you're not all getting into one specialized thing. Uh, that's the, the structure of the, of the institute mm -hmm. you're part of. It's to encourage multidisciplinary, or another word for that is um, systems thinking, pattern recognizing systems thinking, and that's in terms of big data, like you're saying. It's coming exponential. The internet and everything's coming now exponential. It's going beyond that and so forth. So that recognizing pattern, people can think on large patterns and think of interrelationship between various subsystems of that overall pattern. And I think that's something people are looking for, perhaps. Getting a look at the big pattern, like you could call it be. Uh, you know, director of your own project, or mm -hmm. have a uh, have a have a, a individual responsibility for seeing large patterns. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's emerging among the youth. I'm not sure, but that seems to me something that the planet calls for in terms of not only changing one town, but let's change one whole world. In order, because the changes are in, the, the 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 systems are interconnected, and the whole system has to be seen whole in order to change it all. Because this the problems and the potentialities are systemic to the whole system and that kind of thinking should be encouraged and geography is one good thing that allows you to think about a lot of different things mm -hmm. and in an interrelated pattern and get away with it without being all overly specialized if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the future of education? Moving more toward pattern recognition, maybe away from extreme specialization or what do you think the future of education is no. going to be. Yeah, I would say that future of education is a personal trajectories in education. Tra personal. Traje 
trajectory. trajectory. That's so, autodidact. Yeah, yeah. So when you driving choose, your own bus. Yeah, when you choose whatever you want to learn, and you, you can change your career when in whatever time. Yeah. Uh, you decide, then <coughs> it's really that you decide where to go, where to study, and how to study. And maybe you don't really need this uh, traditional institution. You can follow the alternative path yeah, of education. Yeah, because the alternatives are opening up. Now. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and beyond that, the big alternative that of them all is the fact that you've got so much information, multimedia and otherwise, here in public access or television, uh, of the presentation of information that is inherently, incredibly educational. Mm -hmm that's just right at your disposal now that just simply wasn't there in the past, right? Yeah, I have a lot of friends who got degree uh, yeah. in the institution and when they start their career they um, um, they found that their knowledge is not <coughs> enough to start this career and a lot of them are changed, changed it. So they were studying mathematics, for example, mm. and then they uh, became journalists or uh, designers yeah. or... Uh, uh, photographers or you may get to a point where if I may that's true you can be that way but that's uh, that's the, the a lot of the reason people go to university to get a certificate so they can have a profession so mm -hmm. that they can make money yeah okay that's one reason that motivates that's kind of out of directed but what you're maybe getting to necessarily is a world where people are going to have uh, the needs and the reasonable wants met almost by design in terms of the way the system is designed so instead of having to be nervous about being homeless or anything like that you're going to be able to be independently able to court your own course what you want to do mm -hmm. independently so in that case when that emerges and the capability is there now there could be just learning this lifelong and doing things that aren't necessarily geared toward a career or making money mm -hmm. it's just geared to what you're jolly well interested in and relate to other people who are so it'd be a different kind of world than one where it's top down and the institution and the and and the quest is all for trying to get security or even piling up money mm -hmm. you understand there may, there may be leisure coming real honest to god leisure for the goods of civilization to be encouraged rather than just making money Mm -hmm. or a career so and your your institute seems to me to be training you in that direction and may you prosper whatever you decide but we got to wipe it we got to wipe uh wrap it up i'm sorry we run out of time i went, we got off on a rant there but congratulations girls <laughs> and ladies and thank you very thank much you. for coming in great thank pleasure sharing some us. oh my pleasure <laughs> and uh uh thank you for viewing in the co in the uh, uh, in the uh, program and we'll be coming back again tomorrow. All the best to you and all your careers that are just take, taking off so well and everything. Thanks a lot for coming in. Uh, we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Tune in, please. And thanks again, ladies, for coming in. Great pleasure talking with you. Thanks. Okay. That was very interesting. Until next time. Okay. So um, I got off on a thing there, but I, I, I just think it's just amazing what's available to us now in terms of education just as a leisure thing. You have no connection. That's what I like about public access.